we think we do and what the board thinks we do and you know how long should we go with a memorandum of understanding before we come back and renegotiate or talk about it. Is it annual? Is it three years? So I thought it would be helpful. So that's why one of the reasons that I'm, I'm here too. And I'm going to bring this back to my own board mm -hmm. as well as because this is really a legal document or should be a legal document. And you know I'll talk to my board about um, you know, sharing the expense of that with the, the town because it doesn't seem fair to have either one of us, you know. Well, Why does it have to be a legal document? Uh, well, just because that's how I see it. I, really just, I, I had the same question. Like, we could just we could just do it. Simple. We could. I don't know. Depends on. Would you like the garden club to try it first draft? <coughs> I think mm -hmm. that would be a good idea. Do you? Good. The garden club will probably come in and say that we overlooked the whole 14 acre thing now because of the nature trails. So, and of course, that obviously is a point of discussion. Mm -hmm. We do bring it in. All right. I don't see the downside in, like, they've, they're managed, they're actual trails. Mm -hmm. um, but. I don't either. Yeah. I just well, I suspect, so here's what I thought. I was, so, you know, maybe one of these days the Conservation Commission has some wonderful idea for a different use for that space, mm -hmm. right? And if not the front part of the garden club, maybe the last, that latter part. So, you know, maybe there's a conversation about, well, who is better able to make that happen, whatever that is, right? So, so that's why I think it should definitely have a, you know, uh, an expiration date or a renewal, right? So maybe three years, that off the top of my head seems about right, and then we take a look at it and we see if anything has changed. So so given your blessing, as long as my board also thinks it's a good idea, we'll take the lead and try to draft something okay. that I can come back to the board and present. Okay. Now, I'm not going to hold my breath, so please don't hold your breath. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll you don't have any lawyers on your board? Uh, no. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, no. The answer is no. We don't. But, you know, maybe at the end, once it's all written up, maybe then somebody can just review it, Stephen review it or something. But if you're happy with it, and the garden club is happy with it, I don't disagree with you. You can just... Well, I mean, we have enough legal expenses yeah. that we don't need yeah. to incur uh, something that's between two. I mean, you're doing wonderful things down there. We... I have no desire to change. I, I don't know. Unless you start myself. hosting concerts. And yeah. Now, the conservation can't take over a piece of property and do something with it, can they? It's town land. Right. It's not under conservation easement. Yeah. Um, so, no, not without the town's blessing. Okay. You know, they specifically have jurisdiction over the Scoutlands, but, mm -hmm. um, and they likely would have jurisdiction over the property behind Market Basket since that was put into some kind of conservation. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's not specifically designated as conservation. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it, I don't see that they just because it's town land doesn't mean they have jurisdiction over that's it. That's true, but she okay. does bring up a point that you never, I mean, if they were to take an interest because they are a town entity mm -hmm. and not an outside entity, mm -hmm. you know, that could create some kind of friction and would they get preference over they who have been there already or, or some other, it's, it's nice to have something that kind of sets a stage for that kind of conversation. So we don't consider them a town entity, this group? No. Well, they're well, not the office, so they're not part okay. of the town. We are. We're five hundred one c three. Yeah, that happened since I think twenty eleven. But I mean, it, it's not a case of, of friction or anything. But but no, somebody no, might come up with an idea. Yeah. yeah, somebody might come up with a really good idea. That even the garden club thinks is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't necessarily be the entity to help put that in place. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just think you know you either need you know an end date or some kind of out that's mutually acceptable to both sides. Mm -hmm. Should something transpire. Yeah. Okay. And the other reason I think it's a good idea is because I'm not going to be chair of that group forever. Mm -hmm. And already the knowledge about, you know, some of these conversations that we had with the board, you, neither of you were part of that, and certainly mm -hmm. Justin was not part of that mm -hmm. too. So the institutional knowledge just goes away. Goes away. Mm -hmm. And sure. so I think it's just good, it's yep. prudent. It's yep. prudent to have something in writing. Yep. So. Now a lot of that is wetlands, right? That you can't do anything with anyway, right? There are lots of easements. I mean, we found that out. I mean, you know, the water district has easements. The public service has, or Eversource has easements. 
I mean, it's, you, you look at that land from the, it, they're crisscrossing easements all over the place. Mm -hmm. Is it actually wetlands so? I don't I think know. It sure. was. Well, there's a part of it that. There is a part at the beginning of the trail that's Yeah, that's wet. wet. I just thought yeah, there was something you walk over. I thought it was yeah, we've got in to, towards yeah. like, the back um, end of the. Yeah, of, if you, when um, you walk, it kind of curves around and there's a swampy area. Yeah. Um, it also borders the river, so right. it might get wet down there, but that doesn't mean that the trails reach all the way. I mean, it can't be built. Nothing can be built out there. That's it, my point. It is I mean, under. It is under some kind of. No, nothing can be built. That's my yes. point. Okay. Yes. So it's not something that. If they, you look at the zoning map, it is. Well, it's, you know, it is. Is it conservation or something? I don't think it's conservation, but I think with those right of ways, you would you would have trouble. Um, it, and also, I'm not, you know, I I just I don't, don't think know that you'd be able to. It's not. It is. It's either under conservation or some kind of overall easement. Mm -hmm. that so your desire isn't to increase your beds down in there. Oh, uh, we might. Because you said you have a, a waiting yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, we might. I mean, it takes work and yeah. effort. Yeah. Um, it would never be huge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing that this board member has thought about, which doesn't meet with every board member, is to try to. Uh, thin out the street, the, that uh, shrubbery on, at the street mm -hmm. level, only because when you're in there working, you are hidden. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think the chief came in, right? Yes, chief, you sure yes, yes. yes. So for me personally, someone who's been there at night, when I did have a, a garden there once for a year or so, I wasn't comfortable working there at night. Yeah. Because you know, nobody knew you were in there. Yeah, yeah. And you can't see yeah. the road. There's traffic along the road, but nobody can see you in there. Mm -hmm. So it just seems inherently unsafe. We have had uh, some issues of thievery mm -hmm. this past year. Chief Ducharme did work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we used the cam for, for a while until it was needed somewhere else. And I think we ourselves are going to get a cam and put it up there mm -hmm. just yeah, to yeah. help with that kind of a situation. Yeah. But again, if, if we had opened it up from the street side, I think more it, it's more of a deterrent. So, but if we were to do something with that, that's a case where we would definitely come to the board to say, look, this is what we want to do. Is this okay? That sort of thing. So, okay. Uh, that was all I have. Do you have any questions? Or? No, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity for those who don't have the room to have it at their own place. So I, I welcome to keep it. I mean, I just, yeah. But I, I, I see what you're saying about having a Mm -hmm. Yes, because a commitment. Yeah. 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 And I hear our board, somehow, sometimes I hear our board talking. And it's like we, we owned it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just that sense, yeah. which is fine, but we don't. Mm -hmm. And so we have to remind ourselves that this is town property and we're doing this you know, on a mutually agreed upon uh, basis. Okay. So it would be nice to maybe formalize that. So the money you collect for the beds, you put right back into them to make Yeah, we're a nonprofit, so yeah. yeah. So we, we spend about, I think, uh, although it was less this year, maybe about $600 every year replenishing or uh, like a third of the beds, I think mm -hmm. is the plan. Michelle Small does that on our behalf. And we use the UNH sawmill to generate the sideboards for it. So that's really, our major expense is the upkeep of the garden bed. And we've had some capital projects, like we bought uh, a lawn mower. Mm -hmm. We needed a new garden, a new little riding mower. And like, I guess we did check with the board on this too. So we put the in a little shed, yeah, the shed, the lawn yeah, in, yeah. Lawn shed. So those are, are really expensive. Our one uh, profit fund maker is the duck, duck race. Duck race. Yeah. And speaking of, I always laugh when I set up my own personal thing to my family and friends and call it the Mighty Sam and Falls River. Did you see it this weekend? Oh, my I, I saw it. Was pretty, well, yeah, it, it was comes pretty down mighty. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah, it was. The, the falls were just amazing, oh, and the mm -hmm. speed of the car just mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. so that. Yes, thank goodness we didn't have too many floodings. Yeah. We had boundary, but uh, right around the Legion, is that? Yeah. No, this side of the, uh, heading towards Main Street. Mm -hmm. Right? Was it right to a Main Street? Yeah. yeah. Well, right next to Larry Reno's house. Oh, there. yeah, yeah, right across from the garden club. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. The first time the fire time it drafted from, uh, Road to, to the river, I guess. That's good. 
too far. They helped it along the other side. Yep, they helped it along the other side. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, well, um, if you'll work on that and then come for see us support. whenever you're ready, that would be great. We would welcome you. Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, um, can I have a community input? Sorry. Yeah? Okay. Consent calendar? Yeah, that was uh, it. I meant, yep, good. Yeah. Okay. All right, Chief, ready? There's one very quick item. Okay. You glad to talk about this last week. How much you? Is it good? Yeah, per hour, yeah. I squashed my finger yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, per our early discussions about the pay rates for the police staff, mm -hmm. um, we uh, have since uh, adjusted everybody with the exception of uh, Officer Dubois. Mm -hmm. And we actually held off on that for a couple of months until he showed some improvement. Well, he has done that. So I'm recommending that as of December 1st, <coughs> his pay rate goes up to 22-22, which is the exact same as the other two which are this one. And that, that was all part of that plan that I submitted to you folks uh, many, many months ago. Do we have a motion to accept this? Yeah, we already uh, You did already accept it. We already accept it. We're just going to have yeah. it go through. Okay. Then no, I guess we're no, agree with that. Well, I have a Caroline. Oh, do you need that? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. And that's all that I have for you with me. I have not put it on here, but that's just a placeholder, I'm assuming. We're all set on that. Um, yeah, there's no update on okay. that yet. Okay. Yeah, no. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Here. All right. Um, I'm going to wait for that. Highway is, is highway coming? Nothing I'm aware of. Okay. Um, we do have welfare, but do it you can wait until the end. Do you want to move it at the end of the night? Yeah, okay. Um, George was down in Tiddy. He was down there too during the flooding down here, and he also was over at Slyco checking out to make sure the Cobra was working well. And right. Um, I'm aware of that. And. Um, Find out there's a cove, uh, there's a there's a catch basin. Um, oh, but behind Reno's house, right? Yeah, yeah, we didn't know about that. So that's um, behind, behind Reno's, Reno's house, house on, uh, on Foundry. On yeah. Foundry. So stormwater is certainly not aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's an interesting conversation point having a catch basin on private property. We need to look into whether or not there's an easement for maintaining that because mm -hmm. it seems to be a sort of a source of silt but also we need to be able to clean it um, mm -hmm. you know for all the reasons why we said it was a concern to have a catch bracelet on private property um, it turns out we have one so um, we have some research to do okay. all right. about that. that's falling into the public drain system um, I'm not I haven't gone out and looked at oh, it okay. um, my understanding from George is that it's going right into the culvert on the side of the road. I'm not really totally sure about that because I haven't seen that. So, okay. um, but that is my understanding from George. Um, we still need to be able to clean it out, though, um, because you know even the culvert has to be well maintained because it eventually leads out into the river. But mm -hmm. it's not. Um, it's an out and outfall, which is the good news. Right. So it doesn't increase our outfalls. So do you think he put it in or do you think it was put in years and years ago and without anybody knowing or documenting it? Um, someone, it, it might have been Chief Ducharme who said that it was, um, he thinks it was put in eight or nine years ago when there was a lot of flooding back there and he complained to the town about that. and. Mm -hmm it was the result of that conversation. I don't know if that means that the town installed it or if he was allowed to install it and have it um, go out into the, into the ditch drain there. I'm, I'm not really clear on that, but um, he was aware of a conversation about him coming to the town with a flooding issue. Okay. Well, to some extent, yes, but very much not in one important way, which is that it doesn't hook into our storm drain system. At least as far as going to. Yes, yeah. at least as far as I yeah. understand yeah. from from George, it goes right into the ditch line, which does not obligate us in the same way, at least at this point, as having a catch basin that hooks into our 
other catch basin mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. okay. That that. And it's an outdoor one versus an on in a. Well, it is an outdoor one. The proposed one was also to be an outdoor one, though like it was the driveway or something. It was yeah. near a garage. garage. I'm okay. not really. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. It's in, it's in, it's in, not, that this one is not. This one is correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll get more updates. We'll get more updates from okay. George. Yeah. Very good. All right. Um, 2019 carryovers. Okay. So. Um, in principle, I, so I did not get as far as getting the amounts ready. Um, we, the board needs to officially vote. I think you did at one point, but I just want to make sure that we have it on the record. The carryovers from 19 to 20, um, town hall boiler, mm -hmm. um, the town hall LED project. Mm -hmm. Even though you've signed the contract for that, so essentially you have voted to carry over, carry mm -hmm. it over. It's just nice to have it all in the minutes. And mm -hmm. then 2020. A cruiser that was voted for in 19 because we haven't taken delivery of it. Mm -hmm. Again, because you've done the paperwork, you know, I think it's all pretty well formalized, but I think it's helpful to have it in the minutes yeah. to bring th those things forward to 2020. Great. Well, let's, let's do that. I'll make a motion that we carry over <coughs> the town hall boiler that was on the warrant and approved in March, um, the LED light project for town hall and the 2020 Cruiser, which is um, to be delivered into 2020. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, fire pay structure. So did we approve that or did we not approve that at the last meeting? I didn't see that in the minutes. Okay. So what the proposal was, I'll look for just walk in. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Come on up. You have good timing. So. <laughs> Perfect timing. Really? Yeah. <coughs> That's unusual. <laughs> How is everybody? Not well. How are you? I'm sorry to hear that. Sportsman's Club? Yep, the old one. Yeah, three yeah. feet of water, the biggest one was struggling to get out of the so. Oh, is that what the red lights were over earlier? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we do our best. Right? Okay. Yeah. She had two sump pumps, but it failed, and now she doesn't know how to handle the situation, so we'll get there. Okay. Um, to wrap up the larger POs for this fiscal year, we have the last couple of years. Submitted the one prior for protective clothing. Did yes. that before. Mm -hmm. um, I have some, another one here that I'm in to that, but the top the uh, that's not going to be clothing that's going to be built until February for delivery. So even though you hold the PO. But we've got the PO, so we're all set, right? We just have to know it. So can you tell me who the um, who the vendor is? Uh, is it also Bergeron? Yeah. Bergeron. Yeah. Yeah, because when we had her measured and I asked her, she said uh, one reason that has bumped it back a little further than normal, normal would have had in January. But for whatever reason, Globe this year has given their, their shut the plant down over the holidays. They've never done that before. Mm -hmm. Apparently now they're going to shut it down for eight or nine days to the Christmas to New Year thing. So that's pushing stuff back. So. Just wanted to be aware of that. You probably have it sitting here, but it's not going to go out by the end of the month because they're not going to have our stuff delivered until February. Okay. Okay. So, but it's, look, we've It'll be fine. Yeah. I just yeah. I directed it. Uh, well, we have a that. purchase order, which is all I need. Yep. Here you go. All's on the list. You can it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have uh, another purchase order for Bergeron. This is for not just the the gear. This is for uh, gloves, structural firefighting gloves that we needed because. We Invoice uh, purchase order number 1764 to Bergeron for, as I said, gloves, six pairs, you know, give them away. $474. All right. <clears throat> I'll move purchase order 1764 to Bergeron Protective Clothing for $474 for six pairs of gloves. 
I'll second it. Any further discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor say aye. 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 And then along with the protective clothing line, it exhausts the protective clothing line, and the rest of that fills in from the hose line, so we have enough to cover those. That's that the line? Mm-hmm. You're so far down. I know, you get like you're far away. You can take one here. Next one I have is 1765, it's two-way communications. And this is for the portable radios that we talked about. And the new line item was created last year for radio equipment. And we were going to purchase two every year until we got caught up to the number we needed to do. Um, the issue with getting the radios is we just can't call them order them. They're not on the shelf. They have to have a commitment from whichever department orders them. You have to fill out some paperwork, it gets submitted to them, they accept it, then it comes back um, so that they can get the things built because they just don't do it on a whim. So that part of it's been done. I have the actual paperwork and stuff here. So the two portable radios which you want to purchase, um, and what we're going to do is, these are dual band radios, sort of a little bit more than the normal portable that the uh, members all carry. The reason why it's dual band is each engine has a dual band, all the chiefs have a dual band, I want to give a dual band to uh, one of the lieutenants and the captain. The reason why we need a dual band radio is because six of the communities we go to for mutual aid operate on higher frequency. That would be the North Berwick's, the Sanford's, Lebanon's, up that way. So the only way we can talk to them is to have these radios. And I wanted to have more. And the tank truck needs one also, so that's what we're going to do. We'll get two. That's, that's all that was left in that line. So for two of the uh, dual band uh, APX 8,000 is $10,807.48. 48 That's the start of, we had the original 13 we bought from the money from the war article. Mm -hmm. And we need to get seven more. So this is the first of that. So we'll put our numbers down. Okay. I'll move purchase order 1765 to two-way communications for $10,807.48 for two dual, uh, dual band portable radios. Second it. So why didn't you order, order these when you ordered the other ones? Because we didn't have the money for out of the other ones. No, but you couldn't use this money. No? Well, the ones were on... One was a cap. One was a warrant, but you could have ordered these, couldn't you have, and then just paid these two out of that. Um, if you would have had them longer. Yes, no. We originally set it all up under the sixty-five, and we gave them for all the portable radios that we needed, all the mobile radios that we needed. Mm -hmm. So we ordered it to that point there. They can only take so much on a given time. So we we basically maxed them out for about eight months of building radios for us. Mm -hmm. okay. So. So could we have? I probably could have, but the point was, let's get what we needed done, because that was a more critical component to get all the trucks upgraded. Mm -hmm. So let's get that taken care of. I knew this was sitting there, so we caught up with it now to catch, to, to get it all squared away to start that process. Did you um, pay more for only buying two? No. Okay, no, so the quantity is two, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's the same money, same cost for what we got the ones for the larger amount. Uh, and they told us that that they'll hold us, they'll hold that price for us until we finish getting everything that we want. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just slightly confused. They are more expensive than a single band. Yes. Yeah, okay. But it's a different, yeah, but I just wanted to make sure we weren't paying an all a higher price if we had gotten them in the spring versus now. Right. Oh, you're yeah. saying like we got them all in quantity, we probably would have got a break on that. Is that but, it, but you're not getting the same radio. No. Right, you're getting a, a dual van. Yeah. But I didn't know if you bought it when you bought the bigger well, lot, you might have saved money. When we got that money. first bigger lot, yeah. we got three mobiles that went yeah. in, like the tank and the car and all that stuff. And then we got 13 portables. Mm -hmm. Out of the 13 portables, we got three of the dual van and 10 of the regular mm -hmm. So this is an upgrade for the dual van, so like I said, so that the officers who are responsible for a lot more mm -hmm. have the ability to not go chase a radio get it on a piece of equipment because the tank truck's got to go to Sanford. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to have them on board ready to go. So there's no jumping around. So if you go to Sanford, an officer has a dual band. So our rate, the, the single bands won't work with. So the officer talks to whomever and relays a message. Yep. Okay. Quite a system. Yeah. <laughs> the trucks all have dual band. So when we get to with the trucks, um, they can operate through that. And what, what would happen is the officer, as they're doing whatever the assignment is that he has to do, access the liaison between all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And what we end up doing is we keep our members on our channel so we can yep. operate off of that and we receive what we need to go through the dual band and then we just kind of have to make a little bit more of a conversation and accountability uh, that the officer has to take care of in order for our members to know on the other radio. Okay. But he has the ability to gotcha. One radio does it all for that. Mm -hmm. So everybody still has their radios. They're still understand what their respon area of responsibility is. It's just that it, it makes it so much easier not having to switch or change or this, all you got to do is just talk. Why can't everyone use the same band? Good question. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing, we're still on analog. Yeah. And everybody's going digital. Mm -hmm. It's money. <laughs> I mean, bottom line is money, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it it's what it's all yeah. about. It's technology and the, the digital stuff has got better quality reaches further, uh, just does a lot more. You get more bang for your buck. Analog is a dying yeah. um, way of communication, so eventually you have to switch over to that. It's just how long you can stay on your own little island. Right. Okay. We've had that discussion kind of before. Mm -hmm. When do you anticipate taking delivery of them? The radios? Yes. About 45 days. Next year. Okay. Well, no problem. Just like gotta said, make a note. They don't come off the shelf. This is something that once we're committed that we want to get it, then they start putting us in the production line. So, so we have to add them in to use, taking the money and transferring it, to, in, bringing it into 2020. Well, so so the PO is what authorizes gives us the ability to do that, mm -hmm. but we still have to know yeah. to do that. POs right. don't just automatically carry right. forward. So, this so I just we'll have, have to make to notes to do that. Another carryover. Yeah. You're going to give Sammy a whole list of those carryovers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, and the, you have 10000 in your budget for this? Okay. Um, that line, I know we do. Are you all set? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Actually, for 2019, it's just that in 2019 we already paid dispatch, but we paid it for 2018. I don't know that those funds were carried back into 2018 or not because those it was a bill received much later in the year. So my guess is not. So I think um, while we're certainly getting billed once a year, because Dover is on a July through June mm -hmm. fiscal year, um, we're getting caught in the crosshairs of fiscal years. Okay. So we're going to build twice. So we're going to pay it twice this year, um, which is eighteen and nineteen. Or or you can or year. you can delay this and pay it next year, but you're going to end up in the same boat. You're going to pay twice next year. Or you can continue to put it off, but in, and you know, and it may be okay. So that's up to you. Well, how much is it? Six thousand dollars. We got six thousand dollars. So the dispatch service is six thousand. This also includes the MOU, which is that three oh, yeah. that three year agreement yep. that they allowed us to enter into for when we upgrade our communication system on on piggyback on their stuff. So it includes the dispatch service and it is the invoice you can look at. So it has the two of them right there. So So it's ten thousand nine hundred and three. So do we have the money in the budget? 
is very good. What time are you You have paid it. So, yes, you can find money in the budget, or you can delay it. Well, the terms of thirty. Well, and the other do, thing is. Doing twenty twenty. One one twenty twenty. Well, that's. But it is for nineteen. I think that's just their 30-day terms that turn out to happen to be due in 2020. So you could pay it in 2020. If you pay it pretty soon in 2020, you know, the auditor is likely to put it back into 19 anyway because it's for a service year of 2019. Oh, okay. And that's what it says on the invoice. Yeah, it says yeah. on the Can we, not that we like to get bills, but, you know, can we have a particular time where we request to have those bills mm -hmm. so then we know where we are earlier in the year? I'm but sure we can contact the finance department. I mean, today. that would be helpful if, if we have it like in October year. or something, or or even if you want. Well, sometimes see, their year doesn't it. start till um, July first, right? Or, well, know. right. So even if they want to wait until their next fiscal year, they could do it very early in their fiscal year, late summer. Yeah. And then that would be better still. It would be better for us to understand where our budget lies if we oh, yeah. instead I mean, of the last two right weeks of December. And, you know. So maybe we can look that up next. So year. this is year two of our MOU. Yes. And there's one more. One more. Year, uh, that four thousand whatever it is will be gone. Yep. Okay. Here's the actual bill. Okay. Look at that stamp on it. No, at least the stamp. <laughs> Order 1763 to the city of Dover for $10,903 for dispatch services and year two of our uh, memorandum of understanding agreement. I'll second it. <coughs> it's uh, 10903. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? No, thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
this other one is for a RAM. Components for a RAM. And what you do with that is, is it, it's used to push things away, just like it says. A lot of times when we have motor vehicle accidents, the people are wearing the steering wheel and the dash and everything, so you need to move that out of the way, push stuff out of the way. So this is kind of like, yes, we should get it, but it may not fit under what the warrant article is going to address. Mm -hmm. So that is for getting RAMs right there. And see so as it climbs up. And then I have another one here for some other equipment, which is things that we do need to replace, but it's not a priority. These are things that we put down, I don't want to call it a wish list. These are things that we'll eventually we'll find a way to purchase if it doesn't come out of the warrant article money. We can take some of it out for the budget through equipment line items. Mm -hmm. These are things like windshield removal kits, because there's new technology on how they do that, reciprocating saws horrible scene lights and whatnot. So this is just another list of some things that we're looking at. So what did you have in CFP for dollar amount? 30. Which is 30. the first two. Pretty much. Yeah. So, and how much money got put aside on that? 30? Is that completely funded yeah. in CIP? No, C I I no, no CIP, no. For CIP now, I know this is coming up on a warrant article, right, for it to be voted on in the springtime. As far as in the CIP, we didn't have anything in that warrant. It was a, that's where the issue came up. You what I'm saying? What's what? It was new. It was new, but I think money got rearranged. <coughs> yeah. So that the proposal would to be fully funded out of CIP. Correct. <coughs> that's what I thought. Yes. But how much, though? Just for, for 30. The, just for the two, it not was, the third section, not the third invoice or quote. Well, I don't think... The CIP committee heard about what's on that third right. list of things. I think yeah. it was for the first two right. Right. items. Right. So, okay. So if you're saying it was fully funded in CIP for the first two items to be going on the Warren article this year. And they they, they were funded. new proposals for mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. but that the CIP committee recommended mm -hmm. bringing them forward to put on the Warren as fully funded from the CIP. Okay. Because I know when this originally came up, you know, we ran into issues with our AMCUS tool now that it was like everything else, it's all unrepairable, it's blah, 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 blah. So we started looking into this stuff and did some training with it. Was there was the money that was sitting in CIP now for the air filling station. Right. And my initial thought was, this is a higher priority than the air filling station. Yes. So I was figuring we could move it around. But because this was not spelled out in CIP stuff, that was unable to be done, correct? The wording well, wasn't there, it was other. It was under this thing, and we couldn't just all of a sudden change it to this thing. Well, we're still waiting for an I'm answer. I'm still waiting. I still yeah, to it's the equipment, not, um, okay. I don't know well, what, so what the difference is, I mean, value-wise. I'm, I'm waiting for a definition of, yeah. for, of, of equipment, but also, I forwarded to you all the text of the CIP plan, mm -hmm. um, which is what was adopted when the plan was on the warrant mm -hmm. in 2012 and approved. Um, and it does outline what qualifies to be put on the plan. Mm -hmm. So I sent that to her for their interpretation, mm -hmm. um, but I rather expect that they're going to tell us that it's not going to be funded with CIP funds, which then, you know, leads me to wonder how can we better manage our equipment so mm -hmm. that we have... Well, there's an equipment right, reserve. Right, so that we come up right. with a different CIP equipment fund plan mm -hmm. so that we're putting money away to replace these things mm -hmm. and, and after their life is, is over mm -hmm. and, and all these other things that are kind of falling in the mm -hmm. middle. If they can't otherwise be handled in the operating budget, that's the other mm -hmm. approach, you know. So if this goes on the Warren article and it can't come out through CIP, then it's taxation. Yes, though you <coughs> do it have, Yes, though you also have the authority to propose it to come from the general fund if you wanted. I'm not suggesting you do that, but it is an option. Yeah, but that's not really funny. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Well, I know. I just okay. it is an option. Okay, so showing them these two quotes is that will that help them understand whether or not this qualifies? Um, I'd like the quotes just to have them so that we know what we're going. talking about. Um, I'm happy out. to send them yeah. along, but I think they have a pretty good understanding of mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yeah, I just about. wanted to present that with you because I came in today. Yeah. I know it's something we've been trying to do, jockeying with as far as verbiage and whatnot, you know, so just something to make the image a little clearer.
clearer. So I'm taking it that way. Okay. All right, we'll get a better answer on that if it's going to be CIP money. I hope it is. So. Anyway. Okay. Are you all done? I am all done. Okay. So we need to talk about um, where to go. Oh, here we go. The article on the warrant to make the chief appointed. Mm -hmm. Any questions, concerns, or comments? You're okay? I'm okay. Okay, so do we need to make a vote that we proceed um, with that? Probably yeah. a good idea. Okay. Yeah, so how does that work right now? If I'm, like transition, I'm already here. Oh, well, that's going to be for the next year, right? It, there <laughs> isn't really a transition. If it were to be approved, then you would still. So you would still need to run to keep your spot. Yes. And assuming that you um, won that election and kept your spot, and assuming that also this warrant article passed, you would still remain elected for one more year. And then in 2021, it would not be on the ballot. And in March, every year, um, the first meeting after the board, um, after elections, the board does all of its appointments, and you would be among them. Yeah. So you would still be an elected official for 2020? Until March of 21. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. There's no, um, so poof, you're there. Uh, there's no there is some sort of yeah. steps to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, so, have, I have no right. issues with that. I think we've you know, discussed that numerous times, and I just think it's the proper thing that the town should be doing. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. okay, so with that, I'll make a motion that we put an article on the warrant to make the fire chief an appointed position. All right, I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Fire pay structure. Okay, we've talked. We've had some things bouncing back and forth. I think we talked more about, um, at this point, changing your stipend to be 15000 and having you not in the on call uh, on per call pay by doing that that gives that another lump sum money in there that can be distributed which will get the firefighters up in there um, where they need to be you still on board with that or any concerns or questions yeah okay yeah what are we still talking about i mean that little bit of distribution, it's not a huge sum of money that I get from the there for calls. It's about 10 grand. Over the course of a year? Oh, maybe it's just a little longer. Eight. eight, maybe eight. Yeah. Well, you still have the five in there, if that goes forward, okay. with the budget committee. I'm not suggesting that's still take there. that. That's I, I, well, it is right now. Time. I can't speak for the budget committee, right. but okay. that would, unless they take it out, that would be part of that. Your increase, my proposal was for your increase to come out of taxation, and then that, and then it will be automatic going forward, being that where the other one um, was already in there. So um, the other thing I need to make sure I understand is a point is an hour, correct? Mm -hmm. So we so just, well, just don't even have to worry about points and hours. hours. You know, we're just, we made a significant change in going straight to hours. So you know, you know, point is a term. We just call it hours because that's basically. Well, I just want to make sure I yep. never really got a confirmation that that was yeah. the point was an hour. <laughs> I know your first hour is when you get your your um, points, or mm -hmm. but not point. Uh, what do you call them when you get, like chief assistant? Yeah, well, you, yeah you, basically. You, you yeah, get that, that first that's, that's lump true. sum, and then yeah. you go one after that. It's one point per hour. equals so one hour. So an hour, an hour, an hour. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's going to remain the same? Okay. All right. So, 
Any other questions for us? Are you going to explain it to your staff? I will. You want me? Once we get to that point. Okay. Well, it's going on the book. It's going to go forward and hopefully Wednesday. Well, they'll discuss Wednesday. You'll bring yeah, it Yeah, we'll know Wednesday. Wednesday, the budget, the committee, the budget committee is night. doing their deliberation of the town budget, and we'll decide mm -hmm. what to do with the town budget. Okay. Well, I'm not going to say until maybe give me you know, how, that, how that plays out before I go and okay. muddy up the waters. Yeah. Okay. And I still the structure that, that information that you gave me, we're still talking that that's the numbers of the structure that you have? No. 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 The theory is the same. The dollars aren't the same because if we're going to keep the way you were doing it based on the points and dividing it in quarters and dividing it by your staff will give you what your hourly wage is. Where the other one was getting the hourly wage established, which was, oh, I forget how much it was. Oh, I know exactly, and that's like what we had our discussion about. It was very hard to put it in those kind of numbers because it's it's too fluid because you don't know. That's my the that's balls in the in the, in the hours. amount of people out of there. Right. Is You're talking about that. Is not an exact science. The one that you did. The spreadsheet that I did yeah. and had it broken up into eight different. Um, hourly wages and trying, but, the, but he's right because you don't know how many calls no, you're going to yeah. get, you don't know how long your calls are going to be, and you don't, you can't run out of money because you're committed to doing it. So it's really hard. I would like to see this happen one year, and we can readdress it yeah. at the end yeah. of next year or exactly. middle of next year and yeah, see how it's going. Moving us in the right direction. Where we need I believe so because when I looked yeah. at the other, it's the last pay, the amount was over minimum. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah, where, that's where and that's where we, we want to go. And, yeah. yeah. We want to get and, substantially and, above that. No, no. Opinion. I and agree. And that's where we're working towards. And if it falls out with this way, with that going back into what would be the firefighter salary line, I don't have a big chunk. So, that, yep. so that's, that's kind of what I'm going to the drum for. Yep. So I think we're on the right track by trying. Mm -hmm. I'd like to try it a year. You know, you, you would um, have your. Uh, Increase spectrum, and then have, seeing how that line goes based on your volume and your hours. It would be nice if you told us how many hours within a, when you do the carol, how many hours there was. That you spent. Like, you know, I mean, in that quarter, it, it was is, 200 that, hours or something. Well, it wasn't. For, for the whole group that was on the last one I submitted. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't see that. There were a total one. number of points. <coughs> Yeah. Same. Yeah. Well, not total. Total by person or total no, by a total total? Total. I think there was... How can I back I into it with total if I don't know how many calls you've had and how many hours were in that we call? We discussed that and we're, and we're going to expand on that when we bring it in. And when, okay. How many calls we actually had. Yeah. That's going to be on there also now when we, when we submit our quarterly stuff. Yeah. How many calls there were and, and hours related to that. Okay. Okay, that would be helpful. Yeah, so then yeah, we know it's, it's where, where, yeah. where we're where we're yeah. where we're going to be, sure. you know, and it would be easier to justify increasing if we needed to. Mm -hmm. So I would also recommend that you write up the point structure, write up what qualifies for a point, what kind of activities people do that qualify for points. Um, so that how, how one would earn a point so that mm -hmm. everybody gets that whenever people sign up they get a copy and even that they sign off on it um, and that you retain that in their personnel file so that everybody knows how they get paid. Yeah. And it's good to have it in the office here too so no one, you know. Right. Well, it helps formulate the structure of how what yeah. we're doing and it right. gives it some, some validity. Mm -hmm. so, if you have, so if you had a fire call and it, it ended up being do you automatically get one hour, or it, it, you don't go the half hour, right? No. So you have a fire call, so you at least get a hour responding to the scene, uh, responding to the station. Going Most to the of scene. our calls are the average, 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 average call, not the structure fire, but average calls are about an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've been over there since five o'clock pumping water, so that's an anomaly because when people 
mm -hmm. that's, that's different. So they got mm -hmm. two and a half hours into that one, which would be more along the line than a structure fire. Those mm -hmm. are three, four, five hours anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, but it all kind of works out at the yeah. end because we just don't we do more each other. We don't, we don't have a lot in our community, which is great. Mm -hmm. so. okay. But you know, if we did that 10 year thing and uh, we correlated all of our uh, points and calls and stuff for mm -hmm. the last 10 years, and they're all very close to they what are. the average is. It doesn't change a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure by doing this, we can validate that a little bit more by just getting more information mm -hmm. out there and, and reportable. So it's, and just being it's more easy for us to do now because we have this new software, which yep. we've been doing for the last three years. So it's just another keystrokes and making a new uh, spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. That's all there. And it's just more documentation here. Not many of us have gone. Something else when you know what we did. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. So it's good to have as much documentation as we can, and it and it helps to prove the case. Yep. So. Yep. All right. So you're on board. Yep. Okay. So we should probably go to. Um, yeah. Approve. <clears throat> so we need to make that change, but also a change to the bottom line of the. That will increase his, what his stipend is now, the difference between the 15 and that. What's that? It's 78, 78 what's, what's his stipend currently? I thought it was a longer number. 73? I thought it was 73, 20 months, something bizarre. Well, I don't know. Oh, it's of the 2%. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, we, to, we, have to, yeah, we have to add that to the bottom line. That's the bottom line. She's got it right there. Seven, the current stipend is um, 7283. Yeah. So we, 15 minus that. Well, so I'm sorry. The current proposed, I take that back. Okay. Um, you proposed that to have a 2% increase. Okay. So the 2020 proposed stipend is 7429. Okay. So we need the difference between 15 and that. 75, 75 yeah, change. 75, 71. All right, so I'll make a motion that we increase the chief stipend line to $15,000 and add 75, 71 to the, the budget line. Budget, the total budget line. Okay. Um, Okay, so the proposed budget as it is is two million four forty nine two seventeen. So plus the seventy five seventy one. Seventeen. I get two four five six seven eight eight. Does anyone else get that number? I don't have half of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot at it. Two million four fifty six seven eighty eight. Okay. So increase the chief's line to either fifteen thousand and the overall budget bottom line to two million four hundred fifty six thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars. Okay. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. does like uh, detail work, not firefighter work, do, it, does that get points as, attached to it as well? Hours. It's, hours. it's by hours. Okay. Based on their, what the other they, hours what happens a lot, and you probably see it, David does a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Now, if we need to go get a vehicle, like serve it someplace, which we need to go do here in, in the near future, he's taking his day off and he's takes the main car for service, or he does this, or he does that, or he goes shopping for the needed stuff at the station, whatever. Or, you know, we take trucks over for inspections, and it takes two guys. I put them on the clock for that stuff, and as a detail, it's an hour. Okay. Hour for hour that they're doing it. And also what we're doing on the detail side of things, because that all rolled into the points, but now it's all hours, okay. that is getting strictly logged as hours, period. Boom, points are gone. Okay. And 
minus overhead. Okay. All right. And the two people that do 90% of that stuff are Danny and Dave. Because they have shift work. Because they have shift work. Yeah. They have days off yeah. during the week. They're available to go do that stuff. Yeah. So we, we plan it out that way. And uh, they fill in it. And they don't put down everything that they do. Mm -hmm. You know, they throw an awful lot in there that does not, does not uh, cost the community any money. They don't make their time. Mm -hmm. All of us do, and, and, and an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Besides what we just discussed. So. The other thing I was going to say is if you could, when you write up this pay structure, um, under trainings, like give examples, under details, give examples, um, and meet, and even list the things that never qualify for um, points that you're just supposed to, you're, you're just expected to do, um, but also to put next to those things who's qualified to do it. You have to at least have a certain certification or you have to have a certain rank if that applies, so that everybody understands that there's a reason that certain people would be allowed to do them or that maybe they're open to it for everybody to do and they didn't know that I could do that too, you know? No, I understand. We, we, we have guys that, you know, things have to be moved around, equipment has to be used, we have half fire department, can't drive fire trucks. Right. Well, I understand what you're saying. You know, they got to be drawn or operator qualified or officer qualified to be able to operate the equipment. Yeah. I think that would help the new people understand mm -hmm. um, how they get to do the things they want to do um, and why they're not getting asked to do the things they might want to do and, and some things like that so they can see what the opportunities are. But it also sort of establishes everybody's on the same page and you know um, how things work. That everybody knows on the same page how yeah. things work. They understand. Yeah. Thank you. That'd be good. I have one of the members who's taken his level one class that was the uh, fire academy version mm -hmm. through Rye Fire. Tonight he's taken his written. He's going to fly for a smart guy. His graduation is Thursday night. But I'm going to do that. And then the next time you have a meeting, I plan on bringing him in and introducing him to you guys. Because uh, he's, he's in town. He's mm -hmm. got so many positives. Um, it's going to help us as a community, as a department, so I'm going to already start throwing stuff at him and he wants to do it, so let's give him all he wants. Good. His name is Jason Roy. It's on Pine Street. On Pine Street. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's good to have people in. He's a homeowner too, right? That's, that's the reason. He's a homeowner as well. So. Yeah, like, he's a homeowner. So he's, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's so good. Anytime we can get that kind of thing, there's actually a couple of the guys on the department that have actually been looking into purchasing a home in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, circling the waters trying to find something. So hopefully that works because it's a huge positive for us. Yeah, it shows concern. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good, so. Okay. And the other two started their class, so I have two people going to North Burrow with Larry Scott. Oh, okay. In his class, they started last week, so they'll be done sometime in the spring. I thought you had a couple going this year, or had they already gone? Two they already started. No. Oh, so they're already active and they're, they're into it. In Are they going to next year? Yeah, it's finishes oh. next year. It's like six months for them to get through it. Oh, okay. Yeah, all on their own time. Yeah. All on their own time. Two nights a week. Wow. Yeah, I know. Those classes are very big commitment. Very strange. It takes yeah. a long time. It's the thing with, uh, with Jason Roy is the fact that he works for some sort of a computer outfit down in Portsmouth. And I can see that glimmer in his eye that well you got this done and this done you get that actually kind of the hurdle and stuff like, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see mm -hmm. yeah. it's just it takes a little bit of time he's still be around so like, yeah, 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 we win in a lot of ways so. <laughs> <laughs> keep steering folks that way mm -hmm. so we can take my spot in a few years so it works out long few years I won't see you again so everybody yeah, everybody Everybody, Merry Christmas. Have a very Merry nice, Christmas. nice holiday, nice Christmas and New Year. Okay. We'll see you then. All right, take care. Thanks you a lot, also. Mark. Yep. Have a, nice. have a good, but more important, have a safe holiday. Thank, Thank you very much. Christmas. You also. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah, all over. <laughs> all right, now our recreation. Is that a nice holiday? It is a placeholder, but if you wanted to use it as an opportunity to do some purchase orders, you can talk about all the purchase orders. I forgot about Did you do it? They're in the folder. There, the other one. Yeah, that one. I printed it and I think I left it on my desk.
there are two of them. Yeah. Okay, so our creation met last week, and um, there seems to be a lack of interest in basketball. So we have a new uh, member on our uh, committee, Michael. How you say? Blau. Blau, um, who is um, going to take on doing um, indoor soccer for the younger kids and yeah, teaching the skills and stuff. So because of that, we had to order some supplies because we don't have any of those supplies. So he's looking to order uh, two indoor soccer nets, seven felt soccer balls size four, seven felt soccer balls size three, and two equipment bags um, for a total of 383.23, which would come out of the winter rec. Okay. Um. Is that, is that your motion? I'm, I'm making a motion, motion for order. purchase order 1802 and it's for Amazon. He's ordering it through Amazon, but I guess we're going to pay him, right? Gonna He's going to reimburse Yeah, we're going to reimburse him. I'll second that. All right, so um, I think it's a great idea. We're trying to try yeah. something new to bring the totally. kids into it. So. I love it. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. And then, um, did Celia get confirmation that PTO will do that, or did we not get any confirmation yet? She sent an email late in the day that said, um, that was from the PTO chairperson expressing some concerns that they don't know that the future PTO, which is a valid concern. The new people may be new people. The following the year yeah. would, would be willing right. to do that. So. You know, it, it's still worthwhile. It's you still have worth the, the mind, you know, yeah. you have the grant money to yeah. do it, but there's just no guarantee that they'd be able to. Um, the the hope was that the PTO would pay the full license next year, and that we would um, pay for the full license for the um, calendar year 2020 um, to be shared with the school and the PTO, and that the following year the PTO would pay for the license to share with Rec. So okay, so I'll I'll make a motion to. Um Open up a purchase order 1803 for Swank. Is that Swank? Uh -huh. Moving license USA. How much is it? For 496. Um, I'll second that. Okay, so the reason why we're, we're going to pay the full license, we have a grant that's paying for this license, and we want to get rid of the grant so we don't have to carry it forward to the next year. So this will cover pretty much all of the remaining money in the grant. And that's why we said, let's take care of it this year, and then next year, let them take care of it, and then we'll have two years without really having any expense on our behalf. But we can't really commit to PTO's money for the following year, but that would be our proposal going forward. Okay. So that's why we, won't, we were only going to have to do 50% of it, but um, we just want to get rid of this grant that we're holding money on. So, you have any questions on that? No. Okay. So, um, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Just the two, right, Carolyn? Yes. Okay. We do have a really good group of people that are taking on good. some responsibilities. So, we'll see it's going to get better. Yes. It's time to get Of course. So, all right. I don't think there's anything else on that, but we need to talk about, right? No. no, no, no. Um, nothing about the, the grant director. That was all. That's all. It's just going to, going to be. You, you can talk about that at any time. Talk mm -hmm. about, you know, what you're proposing that responsibility level to be and whether or not it's the same person as the summer rec director and how many whether or not you're going to shoot for a certain number of hours a month or whether it would be a certain pay rate and see how much money is left over to have that determine the number of mm -hmm. hours per month you'd be able to afford. Mm -hmm. But, um, but we, why don't we wait till the three of us are here so we all have I, I think an, that an might opinion. Be yeah. yeah, so it's not something that I can do right now. So. All right. So the next one is selling ornaments. Yeah, I saw that. The school PTO many years ago did a fundraiser of, um, they created a bunch of custom ornaments. Each ornament was of a different historic or noteworthy building in town. Um, Just five ornaments? 
I don't know how many ornaments there are. There were well, there was one ornament for every square in the cave house. The blanket, every square in the blanket had its own ornament. Okay, I was not aware of that. Yeah. I did not get that level of detail. Mm -hmm. I know that there was one for the Wentworth House, and then there's the one that we now have, which is for the town hall and mm -hmm. police department. Mm -hmm. It's a blue glass bulb with white um, in graphic on it. So the the school wants to um, just clean them out, and the PTO didn't have any desire to continue to sell them or try to sell them again. So. We now have them. Um, we're not sure exactly how many there are, but somewhere maybe around 130 to 150 of them. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you all like to do with them? We could give them away, in which case, who gets them under what circumstances? Or we could sell them, in which case, how much would they cost? And if, if we sell them, are you dedicating those funds to a specific purpose? or? Are they just, you know, going to the general fund? So Kate says she's willing to sell them. Yes. Correct. Okay. So it's December 16th. Right. So they can sit in the attic until next year. This doesn't have to happen okay. right now. You can table it, and we can talk about it in July if you want. Right. You know. Um, decide what you can do. I kind of feel like we should give them away first come, first serve, but then... People are going to be like, I didn't know. Or we'll have a stampede of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what was the PTO selling them for? Ten, I think. I was thought it five or ten. I don't know, but the, those would be my two suggestions. Yeah. It'd be five or ten. I would have um, to go five just because it may try to get rid of them. It, yeah. I mean, if she can sell them this year, you have five bucks and. Put the money toward the employee dinner that we never had. Good idea. Which we didn't budget for. No, we didn't. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Can we do something like that? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Come sorry. I, I kind of I, I didn't mean to, to lead you down an impossible <laughs> path there. You could you could have the funds earmarked toward um, you know, his, the historical committee because they have a fund, or the conservation committee because they have a fund, or it can go in the general fund. You know, you, you, you can also, you know, you can do the you employee dinner idea with the understanding that, okay, if I sell all 150 of them, if there are that many, at $5 each, and how much money does that equal? You, you can decide to afford an employee dinner for that much money, but you still have to find the budget funds for it. But that, that yeah. can be justification for spending that money that you didn't have to, it didn't really come from taxation because you right. were able to raise those funds. So you could do that, but to be clear, it really is just general fund money that you're deciding to allocate toward a purpose. And so you're going to have to use a line in the budget to expend those funds. When the time comes. Can you use it? Um, can you donate the money to the organizations that help people in town, like the Rollins Police Benevolent Association and the Fireman's Association, for their holiday um, drives? Yeah, that's good stuff. Fire those toys. They you, do food. You could donate to those organizations because they do help residents, you know, like if you, you know, much like you help the community, um, those other community assistance organizations. Um, so that's fine. We can... Um, well, does it need to like float into the town and then out of the yes. town? Yes. So what I would say is let's sell them until a certain date and then at that date figure out how much money has been raised and then um, split it equally between those organizations. Um, for these purposes. You know, so yeah. what, what yeah. I would say about it is that you need to be clear about, before they go on sale, we need to tell people where the funds mm -hmm. are going and mm -hmm. then stick to that, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that idea. Well, I just think that they they both work really hard to help the, the residents less fortunate yeah. um, I did people. Know fire to they do toys oh. for the children. Yeah. And then the police do uh, free baskets. Yeah, yeah, do that. So, um, do we want to make a motion? Should we make a motion for that? Yes, but shall I? Shall we pick a date first, though? Are we going to sell these like until? When are we going to 
disperse these funds? Are we going to like let this go on for um, you know three weeks, or are we going to let them go on until December fifteenth of next year? Or you know, it, it can be somewhere as long kind as of out there. I would say probably uh, for it's like November first because that's when they they'll be starting the Thanksgiving baskets and then their okay. Christmas one. So if you go November first, and then fire usually is on there, toy drive. They're getting ready for that at that time. The first of November. And you can well. still extend it at that point, yeah. but at least we know we've collected X number of dollars and we can just disperse and then reevaluate going forward according to how many ornaments are left okay. and what the board at that time wants to do. Okay. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we sell surplus ornaments for five dollars each with the proceeds being split between the police benevolent association mm -hmm. and the Rollins Refinements Association. Rollins Refinements Association. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That sounds yeah. All right. Select board 2020 schedule. So I drafted that for you all Thank just you. because um, we need to correct the public calendar and I just wanted to look out and see where the holidays were going to fall. Um, there's only one holiday conflict next year with Monday nights with this every other schedule which mm -hmm. is Labor Day. Mm -hmm. We can address what you might do with that closer we'll to that to time. Yeah. Can we just move it to a Tuesday and post it? Um, we can do that yeah. to the 8th. Is that, the that would be the 8th. Okay. Okay. That won't conflict with planning because planning would, would be already uh, the on the first, right? Okay. But planning can also meet in another room too, or yeah. we could meet but, somewhere right, else. But, but I'm just saying, if it falls on a Monday, we should just assume that we're going to meet the Tuesday if that's our schedule. Okay. And then it's automatically posted. We don't have to worry about it. All right. Then. Does that sound good? Okay. So if you're all right with that, then sure. I will adjust the public calendar accordingly. And of course, we know there will be times when we'll have to meet. Right. A little more often based on budget time and those kind of things. Sure, but this is the standard or business every exactly. other. Yep. I'll make a motion that we accept the 2020 um, revised schedule um, to go forward. Second that. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so instead of the seven, we're going to make the eight, and then everything else is correct. Good. Okay. Thank okay. you for doing that. Okay. Transfer state of transfer station sticker request. This is just because stickers are now expiring mm -hmm. and people need to purchase stickers again. That um, we received a request mm -hmm. last year that was approved by the board. Um, an elderly woman that doesn't drive. Mm -hmm. um, her daughter holds a sticker who delivers the trash for her. She does so, this every year. So they just want to renew that. So yes. I and I'm, my memory's probably faulty, but I thought we. So sticker requests would be handled by you. We so do that. that is true in the ordinance revision that hasn't passed yet. So, um, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, so so that's what the ordinance says okay. going forward as but revised that have to be approved. Ordinance, right? Well, it it doesn't. I mean, right you can now, just add it to your job description. If you want to do that, that's yeah. certainly fine. Uh, uh, I personally don't <laughs> want to see another sticker request on the agenda. I'm going to make a motion that we amend the town administrator's job description to include transfer station sticker requests. All right, I'll second it for discussion purposes. Okay, so what would be your, what would be your um, action on the one that we received today? I didn't see one today. Yeah, there, yeah, over the weekend. Or, oh, over the weekend. There was oh, one over the weekend today. for the one with the one on um, um, it, uh, a, a, a truck that is registered to a business. Which I think we have done for other people. Well, that's yes. what I'm saying. So I want to just make sure that we're consistent. That's all. Yes. So it's a commercial vehicle that is registered to the business that a resident works for, and he doesn't have control over the registration of his mm -hmm. vehicle. So we do require that people register their vehicles, but people don't always have control of that when they have jobs that don't allow for that. But so, he had proof of his license showing him he lived in the in town. Right, and the utility bill, which is what we re use for residency So would too. that person so, be able to get one then? I would do that, that okay. because, right. you know, they're proving residency and they have a legitimate issue with their registration. Right, and he wants to use a truck versus his car to take his stuff. 
I would I certainly want to use a trunk. trunk. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just want to make sure that. Spill barbecue sauce all over my trunk this morning. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with that. But I mean, I'm, we can um, get more detailed about the situation. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're on the same. We sound yeah. like we're on the same page, so and I, I'm sure that she will hand them appropriately. So I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 It's your job now, lady. Okay. <laughs> All right. A space needs committee. Okay. So, do we have any update? I do not have an update. So I just I want to you know have you all think about what are the next steps now with the committee and with the goal of the committee and the question about, you know, so, so assuming the Warren article were to pass, we would have this building assessed and we would learn more about this building, but we do have people who um, signed up to be on a committee. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll have to have no additional information until we get this information. So. Agreed. So I just sort of want to call that out and maybe suggest that we reach out to those people mm -hmm. and inform them about what's going on and how we've just been redirected and maybe put the committee on hold. Um, I, can, I can take care of that. Okay. I, I just think that might be nice for those people that... Yeah, because they're, <coughs> yeah. they're in limbo right now. Right. So if that, if, if that passes, then we definitely can start meeting again to discuss once we have that study for this building. And we have had no information whatsoever from our letter sent to her. No, um, but I don't have the letter back either. She received certified mail, um, or she was given certified mail, and she put it's not been rejected yet. So we don't have confirmation that she has or has not received it yet. So Can you just try to call yeah. just to get a follow-up? Because if they haven't contacted you with any additional information and they haven't signed for our letter. Um, it just doesn't sound, it just doesn't I, I, sit right. I agree, I agree. So if you could just make an attempt to um, ask for them to call you or at least speak to them and find out what's going on. We'll do it. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, so. We need to set a public hearing day for the transfer station ordinance? Yes. Okay. Some, I would even, um, yes, I would suggest some time in um, late January so that it's before the deliberative session so that, okay. uh, you know, people can come into the deliberative session informed about what that um, change that they're voting on is all about. We could have it the first part of our meeting. Sure, you can start at 6 for one of those meetings. Do you want to do the 27th? The deliberative session is on the 1st, is that um, No, it's on the 8th. On the 8th, okay. Yeah, the 27th. That makes sense. Okay, let's um, let's do a um, public hearing for the um, 27th of January. At 6 o'clock? Yes, please. Okay. And then we'll just put immediately following will be our meeting because it goes over a little bit, but I don't think it's going to or, be. Or it goes way under. Yeah, 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 that's true too. Yeah, right. All right. Okay. All right, and the purchasing policy, it looks like we're ready uh, yet. Yeah, I um, had to look at so, everything like that. Um, what's today? It's the 16th. What's that saying? Let's, let's aim for the 13th of January to have it come in from desk to desk. It's pretty cool on to go through. Yeah, because well, so. we're meeting on the 30th, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, are we meeting that day? Yeah, that's on a holiday. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're not meeting next next week. No, so then that would be our that would be our last, which we may have to have a lot of action items to end up for the end of the I'm year. Not, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not too. Yeah, me too. But yeah, um, the thirteenth makes. Let's sense. aim for the thirteenth. Let's I'll send Jessica an email as well, saying please be prepared, and that will be a top priority on that thirteenth. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we could, I don't know, like put it first on the agenda or yep. some, something that yep. highlights. That yeah, I think that's a good. Well, if we come at six, it's going to be the first. We can start at six for that, maybe. Yeah. 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 Let's do six o six o'clock and do that policy review first. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you all see my note about ethics? 
Yeah. I didn't really read it to be honest, but that's I did fine. see there was but, but it does it, it does pertain, so I just want to... Because um, that's part of that, that right? It is referenced yeah. in the purchasing policy, mm -hmm. um, a code of ethics. Um, and I, I remember this coming up, and, and I got confused. And in fact, the town adopted a conflict of interest policy, but not specifically a code of ethics. So that's why it's highlighted in the policy, because it was never really worked out. Mm -hmm. So I did some research about some kind of ethics policy mm -hmm. and found that um, you, you have the right through town meeting to propose a, an ethics ordinance which would then govern all town um, appointed and elected officials. So that's something to consider which could be referenced in, the, in this policy. Um, you could also um, you could also have um, I'm I'm missing the word but it's a it's not a referendum but some other kind of general ethics guidance that is not as strong as an ordinance which mm -hmm. is a law but it's something for people to aspire to and it's mm -hmm. just kind of a guideline for people to keep in mind and that's another way to go which you all can do outside of town meeting. Um, but because it's that time of year, I just thought it would be worth mentioning to you that, you know, if we want to do that, the time is now, but at the same time, I don't want to rush into something yeah. so heavy as that. Mm -hmm. um, so that may be something that we have to um, just keep in mind as you're looking through the, um, the policy that we really don't have that. And so how would the board like to address that? Okay. All right. So does that need to come before the purchasing policy or just a footnote that we're I think you can do, you know, it could be simultaneously or you could have a footnote that, you know, in there, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, but it really should come soon because it's, yeah. it's important, you know, for the purchasing policy but really for um, all acts of an elected or appointed I mean, official. Yeah, I mean, I think that based on where we are, that a that an ethics guideline or principles or whatever we call them without having a full blown um, ordinance. Because I, you know. It's quite a thing to develop the language and prove the language and approve the language and then have a public hearing for that mm -hmm. and then get it on the warrant in the time frame we you have need now. An ordinance. To have an ordinance. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's getting really tight for that. So I just wanted to mention it and I anticipated that response. But um, it is something, you know, we, we could certainly work on um, some kind of guidelines that could, um, it, it could work its way into an ordinance if you all wanted to. And, and it could, um, it could be a subcommittee too, if we could mm -hmm. find people who wanted to mm -hmm. serve on a subcommittee who were interested in that to look at various ordinances and take the time over the coming year mm -hmm. to um, propose language to the board. That's another option. That's an interesting option. Mm. Yeah. All right. Keep it on there. Or, or put it on the, uh, the agenda going forward and we'll uh, discuss it more when that just comes back to. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Uh, town administration, uh, board members activity and updates. I didn't really have anything to besides this meeting. We have budget committee on Wednesday. I think that's all I have for the rest of the week, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Which will hopefully get busy and just get everything we want to meet again. I know. So I certainly hope so. Or look into the public hearing. So that's all I have. And then start your update. Um, I'll be taking minutes for the zoning um, Board of Appeals hearing tomorrow night because um, Sarah has a, has a conflict um, and it's a technical board. So um, I'm going to fill in for that since I would attend anyway. Um, we're struggling to make a quorum for that board. Yeah. Um, when you have less than five members, um, the chair, um, the chairman reaches out to the applicant to see if they're they want to go forward with less than the full board. So it may be rescheduled if the applicant wants to wait for a full board. We'll certainly struggle to have to be able to accommodate that because we're having membership problems on that board. Um, 
there's also snow forecast. Mm -hmm. So I'm certainly hoping, because of the noticing requirements, that it's not postponed, but that's a potential. Um, I will come to budget on Wednesday night. And then Thursday is um, the planning board's workshop for um, proposed zoning ordinance revisions. So um, if you all have feedback between now and then, um, and, and I will certainly forward on to you what the what comes out of that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, a, it, there will be an added new section um, proposed um, about junkyards, um, and then um, what qualifies for a building permit. We talked about that, um, and then the other thing that um, we remembered was um, how when um, properties need to go to the zoning board for a special exception. Um, when there is a non-conforming lot, they are required first to go to planning. Um, and it's not clear that that's really the best use of process for applicants. And so maybe right, we would yeah. propose deleting that provision. So that will be discussed. So they have to go to planning to, to get approval that's a suitable use, right? And that's, yes. There's no definition of what a suitable use is. Yeah. I, yeah, there's no guidance really in the regs about how they might come to that conclusion one way or the other. So, oh, go ahead. I'll ask my question afterwards. Go ahead. Well, so so that's really that's really it. I'm not sure what the planning board will will. When is that? What that's on Thursday time? night. What time? They usually get seven. I think I, I think it's seven, seven o'clock. It's a seven. Okay. Um, so, the end of Silver Street, that is on the move. I mean, it's there's a lot it's, happening over there. There is a lot happening over there. He has conditional approval, which is not absolute approval. And that's what this. I thought. So, um, so he has approval to start working on the roadways. Like you know, it's he has everything he needs. We we need to. Um, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's and get the plan signed and, and filed. But he essentially has met the criteria for approval. So there's there's no reason to really hold him up. He started constructing the road. There won't be any paving this year, but he started putting water infrastructure um, in there and um, laying out the base of the road. Um, and he's slowly dismantling the car barn. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't see that one. So, but I saw the road was being made, and I was like, "What? Well, okay, I thought it was still conditional, but it, yeah, it's you know, we're we're trying to be nice and let him make use of what available weather is mm -hmm. suitable that remains, given that um, he's essentially met the conditions. It's really on our end to um, get the plans signed and okay. filed. Okay. All right. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that I am I'm working on Monday and then I have the rest of next week off. So if you need me, I'm not really going anywhere. But I will be Is Chuck going to be in the office? Yes. Okay. All right. <coughs> Very good. Um, community input? Um, talking about Victoria Lane, um, has did you realize that two of the lots have been sold? Where's Victoria Lane? It's that same subdivision. Oh, the... oh, it's got a name now? Okay. Um, we do not get notified of sales until um, some number of weeks past the date when they become official. So. Yeah. And also, in the Blue Inn building, has anyone required or asked for an occupancy permit yet? Um, he has not received occupancy permits yet. He's, you know, he's still in an inspection process. He's not quite there yet. Because people have said that I think there's two of them going to be rented. Um, we, we often come down to the wire about these things. And um, it doesn't mean he won't get, you know, his occupancy permit before people actually move in. But, um, you know, we can't control what property owners say to people and what kind of promises they make, um, but that Correct. doesn't mean that Cause we're I given would, out occupancy permits either. I had, a, well I had assumed that all of the, that 
everything would be all made sure that Tom Clack went in and made sure everything was okay and the fire department went in and cleared the, gave the okay before any occupancies went. That is what is going to happen. The whole, the whole building needs to be up to fire code and have a sprinkler system and, and all like that. So, all right. Um, there have not been any occupancy permits issued as of yet. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Um, I, before you go into non-public, you do have a couple more purchase orders in, in here. Your, yes. You also have the auditor's commitment letter in there. Um, you can table it if you need to table it, but he does need it um, by the next meeting. Um, I emailed it to you if you want to. Have you, have go you gone through it? Yes, it's standard, and it's, I'm fine with it. it. It outlines how he does the audit and what he's looking for and what he can present and what he can and can't promise about the audit. And this is pretty much what we've done yes. year after year after year. Are you okay yeah. to sign it? I'm okay. okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the um, proposal for the audit uh, due maze in Furland submitted on December 11th. Right? All right. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 You know, sign by one. Okay. Yes. So that that was an oversight that there was a there was a purchase order for the beginning of that for the postage deposit to get it moving and this is the balance for the service. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? <coughs> nope. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Order 1725 Mad Hatter's Graphics uh, for a quantity of one of an old town cemetery sign to replace the existing decayed sign for $80. Um, I'll second that. All right, any discussion? Do we need a purchase order from Judy Bucks? He just is accustomed to doing purchase orders. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Purchase order 1726, Caleb Kutcher. Cut brush and trim trees around perimeter of the Old Town Cemetery. Call brush and will call to transfer station for $75. Um, I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Is this Who said made up to this? Caleb? Say it. Say it. Say it. Uh, C A L E B. Yeah, Caleb. Caleb Kutcher. This is it must be his related. family. Yeah, it must be his, yeah, it must be his son. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 on purchase order 1801 for the highway department. Any more information? Um, City of Dover. Um, it's, it's the one ton, not the new vehicle. It was the older vehicle. It's truck three, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, I believe that's the one ton. And I... It had some kind of... I believe it was an electrical issue. It had some kind of issue. It was not a planned service. Just as service and maintenance on vehicle. Um, turn it over. If you turn it oh. over, it might help. Here we go. We 
ductant heater and crank yeah. case ventilation filter. Okay. All right. Great. Check engine light on one code of reductant, reductant heater, one code of crank case ventilation, and replace both cleared codes. Test rogue, okay, at this time. Okay, I guess we must have had to send so, that okay. word. So. Yeah. All right. Um, Motion? Uh, I'll second that. Motion oh, back. 1801. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so all those in favor say aye. 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 And then we have a letter here from uh, Wentworth Greenhouse. Um, they are the owners of um, that. Oh, the oil place there? Yes, but um, of that house. That's a house, I think. 40 Rollins Road. Right. Renovations and furnace replacement. Yes. Which you don't have a permit for in your Correct. Bringing it to their attention. Yes. Okay. All right. Is that the, the fuel place? That, that's... by them. It's the My next door neighbor. It's a neighbor. house. It's a house, but it's owned oh. by the Wentworth Greenhouse oh. people. That's oh, oh, I thought it was the, the house that's on their property by the no. Greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to send them a, uh, a letter. Yes. Okay. No objection. No objection. Okay. I will send a letter. <clears throat> I have one more um, item of business for the board that I neglected to put on the agenda, and that is the email you all received requesting a meeting with the board from the hospital. Um, does the board want to entertain that, or do you want me to respond and send them through the abatement process? I don't have an objection. I mean, I, I don't know what they're going to say, that they can't communicate in a letter. I think... So, I think they're, they, they did... They, they did pay the taxes. I think they're hoping that you will um, somehow abate the taxes for them without a process or otherwise get some kind of indication that you're willing to do that. I think they're also trying to um, sort of feel out the board for um, whether or not um, you might entertain um, an adjustment in value to the parking garage. Um, because they mentioned that also. So that's why I suggested if you meet with them that you um, ask Chad to join you so that he can be aware of the conversation. He might lend to that, that conversation too. So, you know, while you can sort of anecdotally have a nice, friendly discussion, I think it's important to um, not, you know, not offer them promises outside of process that um, they, uh, they, they need to file for an abatement if they want yeah, an abatement. absolutely. Probably as a good little gesture, maybe we should meet with them. Um, as long as it, it's, you know, not a five-hour meeting, you know what I mean? It's like, I know it's a lot of money, but still, I mean, they filed late. It, well, the email stated, you never called us, you didn't tell us. Yeah. It's not our responsibility. It's not our responsibility. Right. Like, well, look, we'll just hear what they have to say. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it in January. I mean, we're not doing it. Monday, the 30th. Okay, so would you like to propose a meeting date in January that's not the one you've already picked for the public hearing? Right. And, um, and you're doing the 13th as the workshop, so. Um, oh, I just. We can never, I mean, what it, there isn't really any urgency to it, correct? Um, they may disagree, but I agree well, with you that, you know, the, the, the abatement applications are due March 1st. So, oh, okay, so we have so time that. to do that. Okay. All right, so what is this? So we have public hearing the 27th, but I think we could make room on that. Yeah, I think so too. Do you? Yeah. Well, I don't anticipate the public hearing. I'll probably bear for I mean, I would, if, if you're going to reply back to them, that we were willing to do it, but I would highly suggest that they start the abatement process that they want I to do. I absolutely would you know, encourage. So I would encourage that so it's well in hand to submit if somehow this gets, has to change for weather or whatever. You know, I don't want them to throw that back at us either. So I would say I would, it, they would definitely have to file a formal, and, but we're welcome to have them come in and talk to us. 
but they still have to file a formal abatement if that's what they're looking for. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Um, do you want to propose a date or? Um, yes. Yeah, well, let's let's do it on the twenty seventh. The twenty seventh. On the twenty seventh. Okay. okay. And like I said, we can have them come in. Um, we're already starting at six, right? So. So we can come in seven. Oh, I'll have like make an appointment with them at seven. Yeah, because yeah. I mean it's more power for that public hearing. Oh, okay. No, I know. Yeah, okay. we probably could even go six thirty. And are you okay with inviting Chad to that? Yes, yeah. of course. Yes. Okay. I think he and to make sure that he can before you notify them that he can yes. make that meeting, please. Or someone from his office can, because we definitely want him there with Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Um that's it. Mm -hmm. That is it. All right. Um, welfare. Um, yeah, we have to go into non-public. Make a motion to go into non-public uh, for welfare, RSA 91-A, section 3, letter 2, letter C. All right. Roll call, Miles? Yes. Denise, yes. 